Hello, this is ASEAN Movie Pulse Talks. Uh, today I'm Panos Kotathanas. Uh, today I'm here with uh, Rydm Zaveri. How are you, Rydm? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Uh, today we're going to talk about this rather messy blockbuster that just came out of Korea. I'm talking about Alienoids. Uh, okay, Rydm, tell us a bit about what the film is about, if you can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to try. <laughs> um, so the film is set in two different time uh, uh, periods. Um, in the present, you have a man called, uh, who is only known as Guard. He has been living on Earth for a number of uh, centuries. And his this is a world where alien uh, uh, prisoners are uh, imprisoned inside human minds. Uh, so he is uh, uh, tasked with keeping check on all these aliens uh, that are on Earth. And uh, one day you, in the modern era, you have this massive spaceship come in uh, that is supposed to bring all the alien prisoners, uh, the new alien prisoners onto Earth. Uh, and things go a little bit uh, uh, afoul at that point. Uh, alternatively, we go 600 years in the past uh, in the Goryeo dynasty. And uh, we have this trainee magician, uh, Taoist magician sort of a character uh, called Muruk. Uh, he is trying to look for something called the Divine Blade. Apparently, it's, it's, it's a magical artifact uh, that gives you uh, powers. Uh, and there are more people, not just Muruk, uh, who is after that. Uh, there's a mysterious girl who is just known as the girl who shoots thunder. Uh, she's after the Divine Blade. Uh, we have a couple other Taoist priests or just mysterious magical uh, uh, people uh, known as Madam Black and Mr. Blue who also want the blade for their own good. And we also have a group of um, uh, masked monks uh, is the best way I can <laughs> describe them who, who are also after the same thing. Uh, all of which seems to be leading uh, uh, to some sort of a connection between the past uh, 600 years back and the present in 2022. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess that says it all about the film, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I had a hard time thinking this up myself, so you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is just part of it. Like, uh, there are right, a lot yeah. more elements in the story. We also have a cult. We have, like, I don't know what else, you know. It's it's just a lot of ideas crammed into uh, two hours, isn't it? It's just it's it's like. Uh, the director, who's also the writer, he just uh, had a competition with himself to see how much ideas he could put into this film or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess he, 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 there have been some years before his previous film, so I guess he had a lot of ideas in the meantime and decided to put them all in one film. You know, I don't know, something like that, maybe. I think it was... Uh, uh, 2000. Fact, it 2015 it was assassination, right? Seven years ago. Yeah, oh, yeah. Assassination yeah. Uh, came out in 2015. He's, uh, you know, he's he's had a long career, but he's only done five films in in in, in all this time. So you know, he's he's definitely something somebody who likes to take his time making films, uh, mm -hmm. coming up with the right script. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wish, uh, I just wish that with this one, he had maybe taken a little bit longer. Uh, to really, uh, really, uh, you know, etch out his ideas properly. Uh, because as you say, you know, uh, he, he spent a long time uh, with this. But in fact, uh, this is something that uh, he says uh, he has wanted to make for a long time. He thought, uh, he says that what sort of a film I could have made if I was 30 years old today. Uh, you know, so this is an idea he has had. He said, "So I would, I would make an alien film. It's a, it's, it's a subject that I've had an interest in since childhood. So mm -hmm. <laughs> he's basically been thinking about this not just for the past six, seven years, but basically since his childhood. You know, so I think it's, it's just all those ideas crammed up together." Yeah, yeah. It, it's the whole thing looks like a kid in a candy store sort of thing, like right. you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess she's writing was not ever like truly great do, do you think that the script of the thieves let's say in assassination is great i'm not sure i think it no, was... it's, it's 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 not but what those films did really well uh despite having a, a big star cast i think it had the motives of the characters uh, uh down perfectly it had it had their characterizations their uh, their motives for all their actions down perfectly i think with this one also he might have that 
but because there were just too many characters in there and uh, because of the confusion between the past and the present i mean it's clear that you are now in the past you are in the present and everything but the connection you you don't really see the connection between the two uh, for a long time and i think that's where a lot of the confusion happens um, so he's never he's never been uh, somebody who's who's come up with really fresh ideas i think uh, you have to go as far back as uh, uh, tadza the high rollers uh, you know years and years ago which was i think pretty original for its time at least mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. i know but after that uh, uh, he, he you wouldn't say that he's somebody who does uh, uh, originality in his films uh, you know he just he he writes well uh, you know uh, for what he writes he's okay uh, you know he ha- he knows uh, how to do a good story um, and how how to do uh, uh, the world building of it uh, this also stays true with uh, uh, the thieves and the assassination and with this one as well uh, but uh, yeah i i do not believe that uh, uh, originality is his uh, uh, forte really mm-hmm. and as far as i see he had an assistant in both assassination and thieves uh, ricky chell was also a co-writer but this time it's all by himself which i guess <laughs> maybe ricky chell had the role of telling him sometimes okay Stop now. <laughs> we need to tone yeah, it down. Yeah, oh, yeah. To... <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, that no, was that it. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, okay. Uh, essentially, there are two movies. Uh, they, they were shot at once, and we'll expect the sequel probably next year. I'm not sure when. But as far as I yeah. see, the budget was really huge. I did the counting, and it's about twenty-five million dollars, which is, uh, I think, right. one of the biggest. I mean, it's pretty right. huge yeah. for. for... Film, that's pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, so far it's been like almost a flop in the box office, right? Right. I, th- yeah. I think I think it's about uh, okay, how much? It says uh, okay, like it has made twelve million, but it's still like half. If it's bad, it's so long, yeah, yeah, it's it has a long way, way to go, and uh, the reviews have not been so so good so far. No, uh, not just the reviews. Uh, the word of mouth, uh, as well, uh, hasn't been too kind on it. Uh, you know, I think uh, its biggest strength probably, uh, if it is gonna do more business, it's gonna be its star cast and the director's name himself. Uh, you know, but if the word of mouth stays the way it does. Uh, I really uh, see it struggling to, uh, you know, let alone make more money to make up what it has made uh, spent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But in general, okay, the film is impressive, right? The audio visually wise, it's very impressive. And, you know, you have the sci-fi and martial arts and uh, all these fights with the robots and everything is done really well. But at the same Absolutely. time... I, I think it's one of the few times uh, watching a movie that is so impressive and, and ends up being tiring because of so much impression. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like, I, don't, I got tired after a point. I yeah. don't know how you felt. Absolutely. See, I saw it in two parts, actually. Mm-hmm. I saw it, I saw, I saw it uh, uh, one night and then I continued it the other night. And by the time I got down to it the other night, I had forgotten a lot of what I had seen in the previous night, uh, you know, because it was just too much uh, 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 to take on, uh, you know. So uh, I think uh, in that sense, the second half for me watching it uh, uh, later on, uh, did uh, did I did feel that it was a lot better than what I saw the night previous. Uh, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I think combining both of them, uh, as you said, it was very impressive to look at the visuals, uh, for Korean in, Korean for cinema is not really something that you associate with really good special effects or uh, uh, computer graphics, you know. Uh, so in that sense, uh, I think this is uh, the 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 graphics is fantastic. Uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 production values are very high, you know. The costume designs of the Goryeo period uh, are well done. The wire because uh, most of the martial arts is of the is of the wuxia style. Uh, you know, so mm-hmm. that uh, uh, that that was uh, impressive. Uh, I just think that if it had been a little bit of a cohesive uh, or a bit of a stronger storyline, uh, uh, the the whole package would have been a lot uh, a lot stronger. Because at the moment, it's just the uh, the visuals uh, that have been impressive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
And uh, I also felt it was like uh, a tribute to genre cinema because, okay, there are elements, okay, definitely it, evasion of the body snatchers is there. Right. <laughs> you yeah. have the Japanese parasite, I felt like Terminator was there. And maybe, right. and then as you mentioned, the Wuxia style, okay, you can see like Zoo Warriors, Monster Hunter, okay, and right. also, you know, you have. Also, an adorable little girl who is very smart and funny, and, <laughs> and the guy who doesn't want to save her but ends up saving her. And you have right. funny robot. Everything that uh, anyone had ever liked in genre cinema, I think it's there. He managed to put <laughs> yeah. everything in, I mean, even guns in the end, you know, guns in the 14th century, you know, whatever. <laughs> So, it had some nice ideas. The gun in the 14th century, I think, yeah, was yeah. It, it was something that if he had worked it out a little bit better, it could have been a lot of fun to see. Uh, you know, uh, I just feel. Uh, then there's also this one moment where uh, 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 Kim Terry's character is imprisoned, and uh, she gives her uh, uh, captives the finger, and mm -hmm. uh, all, uh, all the all the soldiers or guards or whatever they start looking up in the air as to see what she's pointing at. So, you know, that, that the whole clash between the past and the present uh, could have been done a lot better. These couple of instances uh, were good. This one moment where uh, uh, Muruk, who's played by Ryu uh, he gets hold of the gun and, you know, he's trying to fire it, uh, pointed it at himself uh, and uh, she has to stop him. So, it's these little things were done light, nicely. Uh, I just do feel that if they, it had been explored a little bit better or... Uh, if he had done something more with it, uh, it would have been uh, uh, more fun, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it seems that individually, like, everything is great, but they don't make that much sense when you put them all together. Exactly, something something exactly. like that. I mean, I also like the fact that uh, the villain, the, the big villain, uh, is a policeman, which that's a bit ironic, maybe. That was a fun <laughs> idea to have, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, good ideas, but not that much sense as a whole. Exactly. They were just, they just weren't executed as well as they could have been. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what did you think about the, um, the humor in the film? Did you laugh? Oh, no. no. Oh, my God. The humor was so flat for me this time around. Mm. Uh, and you know what I think is, uh, a lot of the humor in the previous films, uh, uh, it worked so well. Uh, and one of the main reasons was that it had a very good actor in Odal Su, uh, who was, who, mm -hmm. who was uh, you know, uh, responsible for a lot of the humor and a lot of the laughs coming out. Uh, obviously, uh, he is uh, absent this time. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think uh, at least for the humor, his presence uh, was, uh, his absence was felt uh, uh, with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Which is a shame because the other actors in there, you know, you've got Joe Eugene, who's uh, uh, in his, uh, if, on his day, he's fantastic uh, as a character actor, as a drama actor. He does comedy pretty well as well, if you see him in some of the K-dramas that he does. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but I just think the uh, writing was really weak uh, in terms of the comedy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And uh, you had an interview with him uh, recently, right? I did. Um, yes. Yeah. 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 How, how How was that? <laughs> it It went well. I think the interview. It was It was at four thirty in the morning for me. <laughs> um, so you know, my eyes were pretty red at that point. I had just woken up, but I think ultimately it went well. Uh, he is a quite a friendly uh, person. I feel uh, very approachable. He was very open to answering all the questions I had. I was able to get a lot of questions and thankfully, despite the uh, less time that we had, uh, you know, he, I also got to find out that he studied uh, uh, linguistics or uh, foreign languages or something when he was in uh, university. And uh, that is something uh, that helped him in this film, uh, you know, especially Indian languages. Uh, you know, I, I, I got a question in and uh, hopefully, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you, you you look at the interview and you'll see what he had to say about that as well. Okay, okay. Did you manage to ask him about uh, Kim Rubin uh, double role? I did, I did, I did <laughs> tell him. I did. It's funny because you know, uh, 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 Kim Rubin, uh, he has a double role. Obviously, he's the uh, I don't want to say the protagonist, but one of the protagonists at least mm. for sure. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, so his uh, his robot, whatever you want to call it. Uh, is voiced by a pretty good actor himself, uh, Kim Demyung. Uh, you know, so if you put him on screen, he's fantastic. Uh, but uh, obviously, you have in the human form the robot is played by Kim Woo Bin himself again. 
uh, you know, so he did say that he just did that so that Kim Bo Bin ha- could have a lot of fun in the film. Uh, <laughs> because the protagonist is just somebody who's very serious, very stoic faced uh, for most of the time. So, you know, he said, uh, Kim Bo Bin, this was his first film in a number of years after his uh, uh, cancer uh, surgery or whatever. Uh, so, you know, he just wanted all of his actors to have fun, including Kim Bo Bin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. And uh, do you think... Oh, okay, okay. And uh, do you think that's the most impressive performance in the film? Which, okay, there are I, a lot of them. See, this is really hard for me because I like a lot of the actors in the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I, I am a big, big fan of Kim Terry. Um, I'm a massive fan of Ryu Jin Yil as well. All the supporting actors as well, they are somebody who I I, I like watching very much. Uh, Kim Woo Bin, on the other hand, uh, a very good looking uh, guy, uh, you know, but his his performances have left me a bit wanting. Uh, but funnily enough, in this one, to see the duality that he brings, uh, you know, uh, this really serious guy and this very flamboyant, uh, f- uh, fabulously dressed, uh, with sunglasses wearing, a character, you know, who's who's just uh, uh, talking completely opposite to what the other character is. I think he was quite uh, uh, quite fun to watch, at least in the in the in the uh, in the other role, the role of Thunder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I have to say, I liked uh, Shoji Sab once more. Uh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. The, the policeman, the evil guy, he's very convincing. He always looks cool or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he he's somebody who I have a, a sort of a love hate relationship with Soji sir. Uh, you know I don't always love every performance of his, uh, but when he's good, he's really on point, and it's not often that you see him in a negative role. Uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the antagonist, and uh, to see him as that over here uh, was fantastic. I was very impressed with his work here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what did you think about uh, Cho Yuri, who plays the little girl? She she was, the, I think, for me, uh, the best part, the best character, uh, mm-hmm. you know, because just she she had a fantastic journey to go along, uh, you know, and uh, she had, she was, uh, at least for a part, she was us, the audience, not understanding much, you know, so, mm-hmm. I, could, so I could empathize with what she was feeling. Uh, but uh, yeah, her performance, again, uh, you know, with, I mean, it's a moot point saying with Korean kids in film that they are fantastic actors or they bring out really good performances. So she's uh, yet again another name that we can add, uh, who is a very young actor who does uh, uh, quite an impressive work, which is also uh, doubly commendable, you know, when she is surrounded by all these uh, fantastic uh, uh, actors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Well, uh, I don't know. Is there anything else? I don't know. Who do you suggest the movie for someone to watch? Sorry, could you repeat that again? Uh, would you suggest someone to watch the movie? Would you say go watch this movie? You need to watch uh, it. Or, I don't. I mean, I, I mean, I, I would, I would maybe do that after the second part is out. Yeah, yeah. At the, the moment, by itself, I would uh, probably not say that. Uh, you know, because I, I there were moments that I really enjoyed of it. Uh, you know, the the set pieces, uh, uh, the action set pieces were very well done. Particularly the climax fight, I think, was uh, very well realized. But uh, as a whole, I do not think it it all just gelled as good as it should, and uh, that's why I would have a hard time as ye- as of now suggesting it to people. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully, uh, now that he has, you know, he's 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 done his world building, he set his characters up, he set them on their own journeys. Uh, hopefully, you know, that could maybe help. Uh, part two, because now you just have to see where it leads to. Uh, you don't have to uh, really think or understand as to, uh, you know, the, the past, the present, who's where, what's going on. There's still a lot of loopholes, a lot of questions unanswered, uh, you know, so uh, we can only uh, uh, hope and see that uh, it makes a lot more sense part two than part one did. Mm-hmm. I think it will be the same mess. <laughs> I, I, since, since it was written as a whole mm-hmm. and since it was shot as a whole, uh, you know, I do want to give it the benefit of the doubt and see it as a whole. But I kind of agree that it will probably not lead anywhere substantial. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, I guess I would say to I think it's a film that deserves to be watched on cinema. I mean, it's like it's this kind of it's a blockbuster. And uh, if someone yeah. goes to watch it on cinema, I would say, yeah, go watch it. It's okay. Maybe you get a bit tired, but there are moments that you're gonna enjoy right, yeah. for sure. So I guess that is with this film. Yeah, I'm also curious to see what will happen in the next one. Right. Who knows? And I, also, I, and and it's also it's almost two hours and a half. Which is a bit too long, I guess, even for right. for this type of film. So exactly, yeah. but I mean, his films have always been a bit on yeah. the uh, longer side, anyway. You know, so uh, I was kind of expecting that. It's just I wish he had done something uh, uh, more uh, uh, more uh, cohesive with the uh, runtime. You know, he had enough time to do it. He just uh, didn't really uh, end up doing it, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I guess that's it. Is there anything else you would like to add? Or uh, think? Yeah, I don't think so. I just wanna, I just wanna uh, say a little bit about uh, Kim Terry. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. you know, she is somebody who has, uh, uh, in the short career that she has had, she has been pretty impressive uh, as an actress. Uh, uh, recently, I think her choice in films hasn't uh, been as good as we would want it to be mm-hmm. i can i can kind of imagine i understand why she would go uh, this route you know she's doing these big massive blockbusters obviously she's being paid a lot of money to do them um she's one of the finest actresses of her generation so you can uh, fully understand why she's being offered them and why she does them um, i just feel that you know she could go back to the uh, the sort of roles that really test her as an actress uh, the kind of way that The Handmaiden on 1987 uh, did, mm. or even The Flower did, uh, you know, films that have a lasting impression uh, rather than something that I forgot the very next day. Sorry, please, please. Yeah. So that's the only uh, gripe that I have with uh, uh, Kim Terry, uh, her career where it's headed. Uh, hopefully she turns it around pretty soon. Mm-hmm. I, I think she's stuck in this because uh, The Handmaiden was her debut, if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah. So we, when you give such a great performance on your first role, it's a bit difficult to realize where to go after this. I mean, it's yeah, it would be difficult yeah. to retain such a standard for the whole of her career. But yes, I agree with you that her choices in movies, I don't know, Space Sweepers was the one before. That's, also, yeah, that's the one before this. Yeah, yeah, and they were not exactly okay. They are blockbusters, she gets the money, but they are not of the level of her performance in the Had Maiden exactly. for sure. I don't mind her seeing in block, uh, seeing her in blockbusters, mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, blockbusters are fun on their day, you know, uh, and if done right, they can be fantastic and a lot yeah. of uh, enjoyment. Uh, but I just, uh, you know, I'd rather see her in another uh, little forest sort of a, yeah. a small uh, role, which is uh, more impressive. Uh, than a blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we will let her get the money now, and then we'll be yeah. more, more critical of her in the future. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then, 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 let's see how to, uh, where she goes from there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I guess that's it. This was as the movie pass talks. We apologize to all the people who shot the movie for saying so many yeah. negative things. You know, it happens. It's our role. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from Panos for the Thanasis and the rhythms, rhythms are very. See you soon again. Bye. See you. Bye.